they have a class action lawsuit basically saying they want equal pay uh, at, at, for the men. And we're trying to do a deep dive and find out exactly where the discrepancies are between – because there's two arguments here, and we need to be clear about this. There's the pool of money that FIFA plays – pays all the federations from the revenue that FIFA generates from the Women's World Cup. And that's a big number, but it's nothing compared to the men's term. I think the men's gross revenues for the 2018 World Cup were $4 billion, and I think it was about less than $100 million right. for the Women's World Cup. So let's take that out of the equation because that's a FIFA argument. That Why would you take that out of the equation when that is literally one of the main reasons why the female – American national soccer team gets paid less than the male American national soccer team. Why is this so long? You just can't ignore that. The simple truth is that the men's national soccer team gets paid more money because they bring in the most. We can talk all day about titles and all that. But again, the competition the female national soccer team is facing is not really good. This is clearly seen where at the World Cup where the best is supposed to face the best from all over the world, we still see one-sided beatings like this. Female soccer is simply not as developed as it is in America around the world. It's that time of year when companies reveal how much they pay their male and female employees. But myths about the gender pay gap are still holding the conversation back. Men and women won't sort themselves into the same categories. So, what are some of the most common ones? 1. There is no gender pay gap. Like I'm hung up on the fact that these new pay gap measurements are incredibly misleading and frankly useless. None of them break down jobs age, background, you have not proven any kind of gender pay gap. It is true that the information the gender pay gap reveals is limited. Data analysts work it out by taking all the men's wages, all the women's wages, and line them up from highest to lowest. Well, because men and women are different, we gravitate towards different things. There's a female brain and a male brain. We are different. There's a reason why there are more female nurses than there are male nurses and why there are more male engineers than there are female engineers. We gravitate towards different things. It's the only thing the U.S. women's soccer team has yet to win. Equal pay. We've filled stadiums, we've broken viewing records, and yet despite all of this, we're still paid less than our male counterparts. Megan Rapino, a star of the team, speaking to Congress on Equal Pay Day. If it can happen to me, with the brightest light shining on us at all times, it can and it does happen to every person who is marginalized by gender. In the U.S., women on average make 82 cents to every dollar paid to white men. For black women, it's 63 cents. For Latinas, it's 55. U.S. Women's Soccer sued the U.S. Soccer Federation for equal pay and equal treatment in 2019. They now get better hotels and flights, but a judge dismissed their claim for equal pay. The team is appealing. The Soccer Federation says it's still open to further negotiation. Yeah, what later came out, and I will confirm this by putting something on the screen, is that they were offered equal pay. They were offered to get the same amount of money that uh, the men's national soccer team gets, and they rejected it. Also, it was later discovered, again, I will confirm this on the screen, it was later discovered that they actually made more money than the men's national soccer team. Again, these people aren't looking for equality. They're just looking for extra privileges. This video is so weird. Almost everything they say almost supports that the gender pay gap is not real. This video should be titled, Six Ways to Convince Someone That the Gender Pay Gap Is Not Real. Common myths you hear about the pay gap and how to convince the deniers that it's real. Women leave the workforce to have children. Yes, obviously. Women don't leave the workforce to have children. It doesn't happen and has never happened throughout history. It's not that women want to leave their jobs to take care of children. It's that they're forced to. A lot of men and women in the U.S. don't have paid family leave. Research shows that women will take unpaid family leave, but men refuse to. 
When women in the workforce have children, research shows they experience a pay cut, but when men have kids, they get a pay increase. Experts call it the fatherhood bonus. And even when women decide to stay in the workforce and never have kids, we're still seeing a pay gap. What has this person disproved? How did she prove that that was a myth? She didn't. Why would anyone argue against a fatherhood bonus? It would support the family, which is a good thing, especially if the wife is on leave. Again, she didn't disprove the myth. She just argued for it, which is weird. Your video is titled Six Ways to convince someone that the gender pay gap is real, yet you are arguing against the gender pay gap in the video. Uh, what? <laughs> Men simply work harder and work longer hours. I don't think so. On average, women spend more time than men doing housework and caring for kids and older family members. And while women are at home doing domestic work, men are able to log more continuous work hours, resulting in a pay premium. So women have an unpaid second shift that subsidizes men's work. If cleaning the house is considered an unpaid shift, then I've been defrauded of thousands throughout my lifetime. Well, in Iceland, an energy company was about to go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. A new manager came in and said, OK, we've got to throw everything out and start again. And made a conscious decision based on his belief that it's a human right, that men and women are paid equally. Mm -hmm. And so went out of his way to make the workforce within that company 50-50 mm -hmm. as much as he could in terms of men and women being represented. So we're talking about engineers, we're talking about tradespeople, we're talking in workshops, we're talking at, at the managerial level. If you, if you hire 50% women engineers and 50% male engineers, then the women engineers are less qualified because the pool of engineers is lower among women. So you can't hire 50% women engineers without producing a decrement in the quality of the engineers because okay. the, this, this selection pool is too, is too small. You can't do that on a large scale. You might be able to do that in one company. Yeah, and they certainly argue that they're not, they're, it's not tokenism and they're not hiring second rate women. Mm -hmm. um, they might argue that, but if you did it on a large scale, that's what would happen. Because they're, look, you think about it mathematically. If there's 10 times as many male engineers as there are female engineers and you insist upon hiring 50 50, then obviously the degree to which the female engineers are proficient cannot be the same as the degree to which the male engineers are proficient. It's mathematically impossible. So you're saying don't even try? Uh, no. I'm, I'm saying something much more specific than that. Now, one company might be able to do that for a short period of time in one isolated location. You know, but there, of course, if you have a new manager come in and he's doing all sorts of new things, there's 50 reasons why the company is going to fail or succeed. And you can say, well, it was because of the gender equity policies. It's like, yeah, well, it's a multivariate problem. Again, if you want to watch that full Jordan Pearson video, it's in the link description below. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Uh, check out my other videos and I hope you have a good day.